And hey everybody, this is a welcome to another episode of the Geek Bites Podcast, episode 103, 103, we're already in our hundreds. Uh, I am Ramon Mejia. I'm in Gardo Costa. And every really cold single week on the podcast, we bring you <laughs> the round of the week's best geek and tech news. We discuss that news and of course, anything else that we are interested in that week. And of course, this week we're going to begin with a big, gigantic thank you to our newest Patreon supporters, Kieran Uchi and Sebastian Nielsen, both of whom have pledged $6 a month to support the podcast. And Jay Taylor has actually also updated, uh, upped his Patreon pledge from $5 a month to $10 a month. So lots of great thanks for everybody, man. That's that's a ton of support. I love you so much. Yeah. Uh, thanks, you guys. It means a lot. Trust me. Uh, once again, this magical man here to my left, your right. He does so much work. He deserves every single penny that comes out of this thing because much other than me trying to stay conscious from lack of sleep (laughs) and whatnot, but I always, of course, put my little two cents on it. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's always nice to get the support. Of course, the guys who who pledge their support that way on Patreon, they get early access to all the stuff we make, the Geese Fight Podcast, the Lit RPG Podcast. And of course, all the other rewards we offer there, including like weird geeky videos, commentary tracks. We have a couple of people who at, actually have the opportunity to to decide the next video we're going to do commentary track, but we just haven't heard back from them yet. Oh, okay. Um, I'm That's hoping awesome. it's either going to be something really weird or obscure, so it's something new to both of us. Oh, I'll cover Because otherwise, it all. I don't care. Yeah, otherwise it's just like a, a, a famous movie that you just you haven't seen and that's kind of cool too it could be hardcore porn a documentary I don't yeah care. yeah that the the last commentary track we did was for the episode of uh star wars like that that's oh, the yeah. first time you saw it and you were commenting on it oh, and yeah. and now i i felt like that was kind of unique and interesting i kind of want to do more of that stuff it's just they get the first chance to like say so, what uh, movie we're gonna do and that's a, one of the rewards of the Patreon you know subscriber. Me, it's very woo-hoo, fucking uncensored so. yes <laughs> it's, it's a very uncensored commentary track yeah. for for movies that you haven't seen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we are going to move on to our regular schedule program now. All right. In Geek News. In Geek News this week, we'll talk about the latest Android Watch, E3, for regular folks. Uh, Firefly Reboot, Castlevania TV show, the unreleased Harry Potter music, which we'll hopefully we'll talk about again. Which, which we're not really going to talk about because they took it off the internet, but we'll mention we're it. We're still going to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, movie trailer, showdown, and much, much more. Absolutely. We're going to begin our show, though, with Geek News. Okay, we're going to begin with, of course, their big story on E3. Yeah, man. Uh, the E3 video game trade show will open its doors to the public. That means you, me, everybody could go. But only 15,000 public tickets will go on sale February 13th, starting for $150. Yeah, that's a pretty good price tag for, for something like E3 for the for the public version of it. No. I'm kind of curious to see how crowded it's going to get. Oh, yeah. well, 15,000. Mm. So compared uh, to the numbers of like uh, Comic-Cons or any kind of other cons, I think it's going to be a more controlled uh, thing, but uh, it's still going to be awesome. I wish I could go. <laughs> I wish I could go. If anything, uh, depending on my schedule or whatnot, I'm probably definitely going to catch the uh, Xbox covers on it, and of course it's going to be all the Xbox exclusives. Yeah, lots of electronic uh, stuff. Uh, but usually all the videos are usually available on YouTube. Yeah, they, they stream them all now, so it's not as much incentive to go live and to wait in lines and to be in the, the you know convention funk. Yeah, uh, especially that lovely Comic-Con summer... Ugh, smell um but it's gonna be good i i want to see uh my biggest thing for e3 that i want to see slash covered or whatever is anything marvel so of course the marvel versus capcom infinite is what i really want to check out i want to see the whole roster i want to see gameplay i want to see everything 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 okay so we'll look again we have our patreon supporters they give us enough money we can actually go to these kind of things mm-hmm. our current goal is like at a hundred dollars a month total for like all the donations and whatnot um, we can go to conventions and stuff. So it, it, if we get enough supporters, that's a thing we can actually afford to do because people are saying, here's some money, go do that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but other than that, we just get to watch it with you guys and comment on it. Oh yeah. And we'll mm-hmm. still cover it. We've done it before. We've done yeah. E3s. We've done comic cons. Yep. We'll, you know, we'll let you know what we know, what we think and you know, our opinions. Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. Okay. I'll uh, move on to our next story. Uh, this one's kind of cool because it's it, it's it's a twist on old we're not an old product but a slightly so ancient. less ancient product yeah uh, Google has officially launched the Android 2.0 
Wednesday, uh, Android Wear. That's their latest uh, smart watch. The LG Watch Sport and LG Watch Style are the flagship devices launching February the 10th. Several existing watches will get an update in the upcoming weeks. New features include standalone apps, Android Pay, Google Assistant, Android Wear also features a keyboard that uses predictive text. So that's right, folks. You can have a, a fully functional keyboard on your wrist. You know, that kind of thing. Make sure you have itty bitty fingertips. Yes. it's really uh, tiny I, I wish, you think that you like a small stylus or something to work with it. Uh, pull out. It makes sense. It could, but still, it's like literally pulling out a little needle. to. Yeah. D- 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 but I think it's kind of an, an advance in over the current watch generation. Because you, you can't do this kind of typing. You have no. to go to your phone and then type yeah. in there and like load the apps and it's kind of a complicated process. But if you know if you can add more functionality to the thing, it makes it more useful in my opinion. And then this is kind of the first watch that I thought maybe I should actually you know look into this thing. Like the Apple watches were never that interesting to me. Like they were okay, but like this seems useful. Now, like any other tech, now there's more people getting into it. Of course, this is uh, Google's uh, version of it. I've seen the Pebble. I've seen, of course, the uh, the Apple Watch. I've seen these other ones that are literally now your phone is literally on your wrist, which means you don't have to carry your other phone in your pocket yeah. and still have this on you. You literally pop your SIM card into it, and everything's literally on your and wrist. And you just dick trace it. It's very, yeah, very yeah. basic, but it's pretty advanced. I've seen one that the screen is actually pretty wide. It's almost like the almost like a pager, like an old school pager if you're that old or ancient young, yeah. yeah a but, pager on your wrist is not the way to yeah. describe a but, uh, yeah, the modern of, okay, technology a credit card people still use those uh, oh, gift cards there you go size of a gift card right on your wrist the whole screen make calls and everything. oh yeah i like, yeah. I like the uh the whole like they look like wristbands or like uh wonder woman's bracers that size a of like an bigger, actual phone yeah. thing yeah yeah well then yeah. there's that one that like yeah i always don't like the sound though because i feel like like it's a slap bracelet it's a slap bracelet version of yeah that's kind of cool too but cool technology coming out all the time, folks. Would you rather see something, uh, some other innovative thing? You know what? On your wrist? I don't really need things on my wrist anymore. I mean, it's not not a super great product. I'm looking forward to the day when we just have like glasses that do all the things that that watch Google does. Glass. Google Glass, but like something better, maybe. <laughs> I mean, augmented reality for your for your phone adaptations and games and stuff like that, so that you never have to actually go into your pocket again. Matrix, man. What's yeah. that chip and soul? Yeah, just jack it in. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the way to go. All right, man. Okay, let's see. Let's talk about some Captain America. Yep. Uh, so, let's see. In Marvel's comics, next Avenger, next major event series, Marvel superheroes will take on Captain America himself. According to ABC News, the nine-issue miniseries titled Secret Empire comes in the new aftermath of last year's Civil War II event and will pick up with the large Marvel Universe learning that Captain America is secretly an agent of Hydra. Oh. So it's... Yeah, so that, that was the big reveal for this, uh, like, 2016's mm-hmm. Marvel lineup. It was it was Captain America has been brainwashed to think he is a, a agent of Hydra, and his entire career, he's secretly been a double agent. And that was, like, the big, big twist yeah. in the universe. And so 2017, it's, oh, everyone else suddenly realizes that Captain America thinks he's a Hydra agent and he's lined up all of his plans as a secret evil Hydra agent and he's going to have to face off against the rest of the Marvel Universe. So it's going to be very much, again, Captain America versus everyone else. Who wins? I don't know about that. Don't get me wrong. Captain America's a good old boy and whatnot, but Captain America versus anybody else is usually like, here's Captain America, here's the Hulk. That's it. Well, yeah, that's (laughs) the thing. He's still a super soldier, you know, so he's... He hopefully highly trained enough, but it, it's always just an excuse to see your favorite superheroes fight each other and, oh, yeah. and, and end the debates of like, oh, who who versus who who's going to win? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the question, and that's what these things always kind of lead into. If it's anything, uh, we'll see what route they go. I really doubt they're going to go the the uh, rated M slash R version, like the way they had a uh, Marvel. Uh, excuse me, they had Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. That which, so that that to me is a more interesting. Uh, novel adaptation than than anything else. I mean, like the, the, we're talking about comic books here. Mm. Uh, as a comic book, that one is super interesting more more to me because just Deadpool literally just kills everybody on oh, every yeah. single page, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's fun. That makes more sense compared yeah. to like nothing against Captain America. You don't expect Captain America to murder everybody then? 
well, we'll see how hardcore of a Hydra agent he actually is. If he does, you've seen some things that he's done with the shield. I think he's actually decapitated somebody, but in like in the comic books, I don't think you'll ever see it in a movie. But yeah. he's done, literally like, well, you know, thing to look out for if you're interested in the uh, latest Marvel storyline. Yeah. Okay. On to we have uh, the new Jane Silent Bob movie has been announced. That's right, folks. You didn't realize there was a, an old one, but there's a new one coming out too. Um, in a post on Facebook this week, director Kevin Smith showed the cover page for a new script that he's writing for a new Jane Silent Bob film. It's actually entitled Jane Silent Bob Reboot. Um, in the post, he talks about Clerks 3 getting canceled because one of the key actors didn't sign on. Um, and that Mallrats 2 is not getting made because it's being made into a television series. Uh, so instead, he'll be making a new Jane Silent Bob movie because, well, he owns them. He owns those characters and no one can stop him from making it. So that is the perfect reason to make a film. I know which asshole uh, bowed out out of uh, Clerks 3, but I love his character, but he's... I'm sorry, I'm calling him an asshole because I feel he's an asshole. Um, it's a valid opinion. The, I mean. yeah, opinion. Opinion. A fact. He's probably a nice guy in real life. Who knows? Um, but it would be awesome. Clerks 3 would have been an amazing thing. Uh, well, the Mallrats becoming a TV show, it's, it's good. It's, you know... It's I, I want to see how much level because they did do. Did you ever watch the the pilot of the uh, Clerks TV show where they had Jim Brewer as Dante? Oh yeah, that was that that weird twist on it. Um, I think I remember vaguely seeing it somewhere on the internet at yeah. some point. It wasn't that amazing. It wasn't that amazing. Yeah, Trying yeah. to hit some adult humor in it, but it, but it's for television, so it's hard to do. It got that feel. Like I think you do it for like Netflix now and go totally R rated, X rated, whatever. Oh, yeah, it got that feel, though, if you ever watch it. It was very much like watching, like, uh, Boy Meets World, uh, yeah. Step by Step, that kind of feel that's, of the That's show. the time frame it was written in, yeah. Exactly. So th- those are the kind of television shows that were on TV, so mm-hmm. it makes sense that it would mimic that, only that that's not the appeal of those movies. No. Absolutely. So it's, it, it's a bad adaptation, and that particular pilot episode that you're talking about. So I don't know, especially calling it a reboot. Uh, well, that's just the title. It's I a know, working thing. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine anyone else playing them besides them. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> well, it's, they did have... Well, you did see Jane Silent Bob, right? Yeah. They had James Vanderbeek as Jay and yeah. <laughs> and the pie fucker as uh, Bob. So, but uh, uh, the thing is with me is like, especially calling it a reboot, obviously there's going to be... I like to call it some key characters missing because, um, you know, they're dead. Yeah, but that, that happens great. as they get older. I mean, yeah, so. Kevin Smith is, is what, 45-ish? Almost 50, I think, something, something in there? He's a young. Pup. He's at least forty. I mean, he's at least he's in his mid forties at least. I know. He's a young. Pup. Yeah. So. so, but uh, yeah, because obviously it would be amazing if they, you know, I don't want to say resurrect from the dead, but if they got Carrie Fisher and George Carlin back on back on the movie, that but, would be uh, yeah. interesting. I don't know how much budget they have for CG effects, though. I don't know uh, if they're going to try to princess lay her uh, into the film like that, but hey. Carver cut out or something. Yeah, but I think it's a cool story. I'm not happy to see more Kevin Smith movies that oh, kind of go back to the original. Yeah, even comedic as roots, and he's been doing a lot of like um, horror films. Um, the Moose Jaws, yeah, waiting for Moose Jaws, and they've been really kind of indie-ish. And this one kind of could just go back. Oh, this is just a funny, goofy film that that's in line with this, uh, you know, skewer uh, was a view skewerverse. Yeah, it's for the fans. It's for the for fans, sure, yeah, and you know, hopefully, other people will check it out too. Okay, uh, next we have new Firefly interest. Yeah, Fox, way to go! Hopefully, they do something well with it. Since Josh Whedon's Firefly was prematurely canceled, there's been a lot of talk regarding a revival of Serenity sequel. At the last couple of times, uh, last couple times a year, there's some there's some kind of report about Whedon. Nathan Fillion and other actors being asked if it could ever happen. Uh, no one has ever said it won't happen. It's just one of those things where we would have to have a perfect storm of things to happen before there was any kind of movement. Uh, most everyone involved with the original series are keeping busy doing other projects. Fox Broadcasting President of Entertainment David Madden, Madden uh, recently talked about uh, it in an interview with Rotten Tomatoes, he told them that he would consider doing it if Josh Whedon wants to do it. Yeah, and almost was like a kind of a cop out on Fox's part saying, Oh, yeah, we'd love to do this if just Josh Whedon would sign another project. And Bullcrap. Josh Whedon has stated very clearly that he's more than happy to do it. He's just, he's been booked for the last couple of years doing, you know, movies like The Avengers, you know, big, big name films. Um, so going back to television is probably not his biggest priority at least not for the kind of paycheck they're 
they originally gave him for Firefly. Um, yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't know if this is ever going to get off the ground because all the actors are older, like a lot older. I mean, have you seen Nathan Fillion lately? He's definitely not the skinny kid he was in Firefly. Mm, yeah. I mean, he's, still, he's, he's not bad looking and he's just he's just older. I mean, so he's going to be heavier. Yeah. And everybody else is, is aged. The, yeah, the TV show was good. The movie was excellent. Yeah, I feel like um, the movie was a great little ending to it. Yeah, um, I... I want to say expect a reboot out of it, but I I would yeah I could I would, go for a reboot. I, I could would, I would see it because I think they could do more if they if they went the route of CG or at least some kind of version of an animated series. No, I I I, mean, I, prefer, I prefer this as a live action because there there are a lot of good sci fi films that have uh, television shows that have come out recently like The Expanse. Uh, there's a Mars like space show and there's mm-hmm. a bunch of others that the the audience has grown up enough. Yeah. That the I think it ex, it's the opportunity exists for it to be done redone well and expanded in that universe without losing the crowd necessarily. Like oh, doing yeah. a reboot with like a younger cast, just it I, I think it could work. Oh yeah, because my thing when I first heard of this news, I'm like, sweet more space whores. But uh, obviously they lost the 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 what's his name, um, the father preacher guy. Yes, in real life. So. That's one other character down in not, not mean it in a bad way. He wasn't um, a major character either, but I mean, he he did show up for the movie. Yeah. So, um, I honestly, who who wrote this? Who wrote? At least the Joss Whedon production okay, entirely. So if yeah. it's his, and yeah, it, totally the ball is is in his court if he wants to do it. Yeah. But it's not just, like yeah. it's not it like would be, box. Can't he buys well just working for free, I right know, and that it'd probably be the same amount as his last paycheck. Yeah. So there so, you go. So hopefully, if you want to see Joss Whedon do this, you can email him at jossweedon.com. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Probably. But you should probably look into like getting a hold of him and, and yeah. Twittering or Facebook him. See how he feels about it. Go on, folks. Go geek out on, on Joss Whedon about this. Okay, next story. We have a uh, Netflix has announced a Castlevania TV series. Uh, the hit video game franchise Castlevania is being developed as a TV series by Netflix. Uh, the news was tucked away in a press release from Netflix that simply said, Castlevania, Season 1, Part 1, coming to Netflix in 2017. Um, That's there, this year. That is this year. It is 2017. You are correct. <laughs> uh, there are no details beyond that currently. No plot lines. Nothing like that. Uh, but this might be the same animated Castlevania project that was reportedly going into development a couple months ago. So it might be an... I'm, I I think it works best as an animated series, actually. Oh, totally. Uh, uh Visually, it's it's amazing compared to, of course, eight bit technology. But I'm a big fan, me personally, of Symphony of the Night, uh, the Castlevania game. It was amazing. The music was amazing. The 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 concept art of it, the the gameplay, the characters, the villains, Dracula. Uh, it was all great. There's a lot of potential for this series. I don't I don't know the storyline was ever like a huge part of the video game franchise says it, but yeah. like you're right the, all the elements are there for a good supernatural action adventure kind of television show yeah it was pretty much like Van Helsing it's gonna it's pretty yeah. much Van Helsing as a TV series yeah. so it, that's how it kind of work yeah so like especially if they go the route of anime the artwork that they use for like especially uh, uh, Castlevania 79 even the other ones like Dark Shadows and all the other ones they've made amazing characters they, oh, yeah. uh, they, they're, artistic they're, wise there are plenty of animated productions for vampire stuff that has done really well Some, sometimes it's campy and weird oh, yeah. But there are plenty of artists out there and artistic styles that would lend itself to this kind of supernatural fantasy. Vampire D or um, what's the other one? Alucard. Mm-hmm. I forget which one that was it called though. Helsink. Yeah, Helsink mm-hmm. is another amazing vampire yeah. anime kind of series oh, yeah. that, that just, it feels different but action-y and vampire at the same time. Yeah. And so there, there are a lot of ways they could twist the, the Castlevania franchise to make it interesting and new and exciting uh, especially in the animated uh, adaptation of it the, the sky is kind of the limit uh, yeah. so what kind of things you could put in there just to see a live action simon belmont no well now well live action would be amazing uh but an animated uh version yeah. depending which route they go they could go the classic victorian era or they could go the barbarian so it's all a matter of what they want to do yeah and i'm looking forward to seeing it in 2017 yeah Okay. So next one is talk about Powerless and the Legion premiere. Two show, two new superhero TV shows premiered this week. Powerless, a workplace comedy set in the DC universe where Wayne affiliate company makes products to protect the average citizen from fallout of superhero battles. 
Legion, a Fox TV show, is the story of a young man that thinks he has multiple personality disorder, only to find out he's a mutant uh, with a legion of superpowers. Power is funny, best part of the show, Ron Funches, Legion, 70s period piece. Yeah, it's actually a very interesting kind of combination. The original Powerless um, pilot actually had them as an insurance company who were you know, trying to do loss prevention w- from superhero fallout, essentially. But they changed that to a more of a manufacturing company who makes products that are protecting people from superhero fallout. See, and they're kind of a failing company, but it allows for more like product ideas. That's funnier. Sounds yeah, funnier. Yeah, it definitely is. And I mean, Vanessa Hudgens, is in, which is, she's almost unrecognizable. I, like, honestly, somebody had to say, yeah. is that girl from yeah, exa- uh, the... What do you call High School Musical? I'm like, who? who? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, exactly. And so she's it, it just everything. She's just old, older. Um, yeah, she's way. not singing. So it, it, it's part of the, the thing. But she holds her own in the cast. And we have David Pudi um, from Community. You have... Uh, Ron And I think it's uh, something Turk. He's from Firefly. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he knows... There um, and Ron Punches, who's super hilarious. I think he's the funniest person on the entire oh, yeah. show. He's one of those. Vanessa Hudgens plays more like a straight woman. Oh yeah, if you ever catch Ron Punches on any of the at midnights, yeah, he's like a winner all the time. He's, Absolutely, he's, 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 he's always on top. Super hilarious. And in the first, the pilot episodes, of course, a little rough because it's the pilot episode. I'm hoping episode two picks up a little bit. Even then, it was, it was still pretty funny enough you know, to get me to watch it and to put it on my watch list on Hulu. My only thing about it is I, I'm not sure. Obviously, they are in the DC universe. Yeah. I'm not sure if they'll do a cameo of any characters. I, they don't have any cameos yet, but they throw out a heck of a lot of names. Like a lot more than I thought they were. They mentioned Batman. They mentioned Superman, Wonder Woman. Um, this is a Wayne subsidiary. Exactly. The main character, like the, the boss. is like his cousin or something? Yeah, the boss like is like... Is, is Bruce, Bruce Wayne's, Wayne's cousin, cousin with a Wayne last name still, though? Mm-hmm. And they, they reference, like, Bruce Wayne calling him mm-hmm. uh, as, like, the boss boss. Awesome. Uh, so they throw out a bunch of names. I, I, I doubt they're ever going to do more than, like, a, a casual oh, cut of, like, oh, the, the back of the cape or, like, uh, part of the costume or something. So, All the superheroes they throw it into the pilot are just, like, no names that aren't officially in the DC Universe just because they want to keep this as its own thing. But I'm surprised that they've even mentioned... Yeah, the other superhero names. Because licensing and trademark, yeah. I could understand. It's a lot harder. Like they, do. yeah, they like in Arrow, they generally didn't mention anybody that wasn't in the Berlanti DC universe. You know, they haven't mentioned any of the other guys, right? Exactly. So that and that's kind of the idea. But in this little case, they're, here they're a little there, freer yeah. uh, with those licensing names. Like, hey, they're getting them a little bit more rigorous. So I kind of liked it. Okay. Now the Legion is actually really cool because they mentioned the M word. They yeah. use the word mutant. And I was like super stoked just because you never hear it anywhere else, like in any of the other franchises, because one company owns it, you know? And, and so this is, this is kind of a cool thing and that they acknowledge that mutants exist in this 1970s, mm-hmm. uh, 80 ish world. Uh, it's very stylized. The first episode sets him in a mental hospital. Um, and it's, it's just kind of weird and quirky and you're not really sure if it's all in his head or if it's actually happening in real life, and now they see, and that's kind of the appeal of, of this kind of insight into a, a man. It feels like a man's going crazy, but in reality, it's he has these personalities in his brain that each represent a different um, superpower or mutant power, I should say, and he doesn't realize it. And so that that's the beginning part of this episode, and it doesn't kind of click with everybody on the reviews, but I thought it was absolutely cool. That's why with me, I wasn't sure how they were going to play it out. Because obviously, it's an it's an X-Men character. It's an yeah. X-Men universe. X-Men this. Yeah, he's so, the son of uh, Charles, Charles Xavier, Xavier. Yeah. So that was the whole thing that I wanted to see how they were going to link him with it. Like, uh, was he, you know. I don't think they mentioned Charles here yet. But, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's the first episode. Because it would be amazing to me if they had him, like, literally, you know, be, be taken out of the X-Mansion. Even on a stretcher or something you know, put into the ambulance, taken to the mental hospital, whatever kind of thing. Mm. And, you know, they go from there. But yeah, no, they start on the mental hospital and he eventually kind of escapes. And that's kind of the, the ending portion of, of the first episode, like him leaving the hospital and people like the government had captured him. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the story too. And then him escaping from them. And at the very end of it, there's a ton of like mutant powers 
you know, giant rocks flying yeah. around, people who are invisible who can, you know, kill whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's very, very interesting. So I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool. Very, very stylized, though. My thing that kind of got me surprised, especially the show Powerless being on ABC, mm-hmm. I wish it was on the CW. It's an, it's an NBC show. NBC, that's yeah. why I kind of wish, though, it was on the, the CW because that's where all the oh, DC... Oh, yeah, the DC Berlanti stuff, yeah. The, the, yeah, the DCW. Yeah, they, they, they kind of have their own... Berlanti DC, you know, mm-hmm. the, the DCW universe, yeah, DCW, yeah, because yeah, uh, it would be amazing because then they have that link with everything. Because especially since those crossover, yeah, but episodes. they're very different kinds of shows, though. That's true. Those are very real superhero rush, and this one's more just it's a workplace comedy that happens to be in a superhero universe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that gives them a little more flexible. Like they don't have to be quite so serious about the superhero thing. They can treat it casually, as like almost like they're non-player characters in a video game. Or, like, the side characters in the comic. Like, sidekicks. Yeah, or just, like, the people who just walking around when things, bad things happen. Oh, yeah. You know? That's always interesting. Okay, uh, on to the next story. We have Uptown Funk with Family Guy Voices. We're actually going to play a little bit of this in a second here. Uh, but Mike Boltz has made a name for himself with his Family Guy impressions over the years. Uh, now he's taking on Uptown Funk, that song you all know. And it's pretty good. Uh, Stewie and Peter are on the forefront. Uh, but he also brings in voices from Family Guy, American Dad, and even King of the Hill. There are catchphrases galore, and it's it's rather entertaining. So we're going to play that for you, or at least a little bit. We'll start back the beginning. Swan for them hard girls, them hard girls, straight masterpiece. Styling, wildin', living it up in the city. Got just something with Saint Laurent. Got to kiss myself, I'm so pretty. I'm too old, I dance. Call the police and a fireman. I'm too old, I dance. Make a dragon want to retire, man. I'm too old, I dance. You say my name, you know who I am. I'm too old, I dance. Am I bad for that money? Where have I seen the and there wasn't you go. it on was it X Factor or something? I don't know that he's ever been on the X Factor, but it's, I, a, it's definitely an interesting kind of piece of, of combining, c- combining voice actors and real actual yeah. popular popularized music. So it's a it's a cool mix. I, I just thought it was fun yep. to share with everybody who you know who listens or watches the show. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure if it was him, but somebody did the same concept. But it was on the X Factor. Did the sing the voices, put the song of Wrecking Ball to Miley Cyrus's Wrecking uh. Ball. So it it was good. I've seen some other ones too. There's these there. Honestly, these guys are awesome voice talents because, of course, the original voice for a majority of the Family Guy characters is Seth MacFarlane yeah. himself. So, if he doesn't want to do all the work himself, he, he can afford to pay somebody else to do all the work for him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Voice work. Well, this is more just like a fan thing. So, oh, yeah, I mean, it's, totally. it's, it's, it's so fun and interesting, and I thought it was just kind of cool like to see your, your favorite oh, yeah. animated voices in this kind of pop pop song so yeah. it's kind of cool that's all, that's all, that's all we we're really sharing folks. i like it there was this yeah. other one though where i can't think of his name but he he does awesome disney character voices oh yeah yeah. he did he did a cover of a song i think he did wrecking ball also but he is actually, the voice of like some disney people oh yeah mickey yeah. minnie the whole pretty much every, everybody in the whole uh disney universe Cast, if yeah. you will but what was more amazing he actually went to the park and you know how obviously the characters can't really speak. Right. He spoke to them in their voices. And of course, they all the characters were right on top of being like Yeah. Like, they were <laughs> you know, literally speechless. Yeah, yeah. So but it was it was amazing because you know, there's you, you hear like really bad impressions and like here's mine, like somebody doing like a really bad me going, ha, oh, oh, ha, you know, like that, and mm-hmm. it's like, huh, oh, yeah, you're really good. Job, good. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, hey. But when they when they do it well, oh my god! I and this was it. a good example, I think, of that. Yeah, because do you ever watch like old uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, and they would have like caricatures and whatnot, and obviously they can't afford the, the real actor, but they would do the voices and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I miss that. Nobody does that anymore. Nope. The last the last thing was maybe Animaniacs. Yeah, 
that's it. <laughs> well, there aren't that many kind of animated shows like that anymore in the first place. Yeah. Most of it's transitioned to action adventure. Um, boom, boom, card game. Yeah, or like kid shows. Monsters. Like there's very much a division in the animated world between kid shows and like anime, basically. And that mm. there's not much in between anymore. Like very occasionally. Like I see it's Samurai Jack is no, that's even in the more <laughs> the anime style. Which we'll talk about in a second yeah. in our movie trailer showdowns. We have six trailers that enter this week, folks. Only one leaves as the winner. Uh the six entries for this week's trailers of the week or the movie trailer showdown. We have Samurai Jack, the full trailer for that series that's coming out on Netflix. We also have the Iron Fist trailer. We have Stranger Things season two, Teen Titans, the Judas Contract. Guardian of the Galaxy 2, their Super Bowl teaser, and Infinity Wars, their teasers. So, Infinity Wars has actually started filming this week, and to celebrate, they, they threw out a video with, um, like, major Marvel characters. Who Spider-Man. Are, Spider-Man. Um, Iron Man. Iron Man. Hulk? I don't think Hulk was in there, was he? I think it was... Uh, well, Bruce Banner, I guess? No, no, it was um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh. Chris Pratt. Star-Lord. Star-Lord, yeah. So it's Star-Lord, um, the new Peter Parker, and you've got Robert and Junior Iron Man, all in the same video talking about like their characters. They're actually in the same room, filming at the same time for the next year or so. Um, and, of course, the director stuff, concept art, all that cool things. So that that's the Infinity Wars one. But you've seen all six videos, man. Which one was your favorite? Uh, uh, what I want to see, um, of course, I would love to see Infinity Wars, but I want to see more of it because it's going to be years in the making literally yes so which um, one which one of these trailers was the most exciting for you i'm gonna say iron fist just because there was more of it iron fist so iron fist is currently up on the screen for the video version of this podcast um it it's actually a really cool video that shows him coming back from the himalayas from <laughs> from the white guy who learned kung fu he's coming back to the city as a rich boy and taking over the, his his company, it very it feels very Didn't much I like a hear that like before. a Bruce Wayne kind of thing, yeah. Isn't that like a Green Arrow kind of concept? Green Arrow, mm. Bruce Wayne. Um, there there are several versions of this. Parents get but this killed? is this is Marvel, mm-hmm. not DC. They just steal each other's storylines, mm-hmm. uh, but they're different because he has a magic fist, um, and that that very much is is it's like the ninja combo with the rich white guy. Uh, uh, at, but for me, it, it kind of works. I'm hoping that it, in the trailer, you actually get to see that there's more of the hand as the major villain character. They kind of tease it in in, uh, in Daredevil mm-hmm. um, towards the end of that season. Um, and here, it's coming back. So I'm happy oh, yeah. to see that this is where they're they're playing up the mystical ninja stuff. Yeah, the, the Netflix Marvel cin- uh, television universe, yeah. if you will. It, it's great. It works so well. And that is literally your last defender. Once they get them all together, uh, whatever they're just the yeah, they're, they're filling the do. defenders now. Yeah, they've been this, now. This, they got the team. Yeah, they got the team together. They've already done like um, press on like Entertainment Weekly stuff like that, where they're, they're already been on the covers, cast it together, and talking about their experiences already. Film, you know, leaked photographs from the set and that kind of stuff. So this is this is kind of old hat for them, but it's still an interesting thing for us, especially considering it's coming out next month, yeah. March. So it's not that long of a wait. Happy to see more Marvel stuff. Everything they've done in the Netflix Marvel universe has been amazing. No complaints for me whatsoever. So I'm, I'm happy to look forward to the more kung fu action. And he looks like he got disciplined in a good way because his style it looks like something gets straight out of a martial arts flick. Yeah, He's which is bust- what. Yeah, that's what this is like. Daredevil was very much the Batman gritty gritty crime superhero. Mm. Um, Jessica Jones detective. Um, uh, Power Man, um, the urban storyline, you know, basically mm-hmm. ethnic, uh, the Black Power kind of version of of, of the Marvel franchise, yeah. which is true. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very much about, uh, yeah, Black Power, uh, and in that community, taking back your community from bad people, but doing it within your own people and not relying on the police, not relying on other powers because they don't help. Exactly. Uh, and in this one, it's kung fu, yeah. it's kung fu fighting. It's not that complicated, but that's that's kind of what it comes down to. And so those four like pieces come together to form the defenders. I'm I'm just hoping they do to him the way they did with the other TV shows and have a I don't know how they'll do it, but I want to see him in the green and yellow costume in one way or another. Because the main thing with me, I have a thing for mask. I want to see him rock that mask. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's in in when Daredevil's wearing a costume. 
Mm-hmm. I don't see that it's unreasonable. I mean, they even did it in the Power Man. And, and, and in Jessica Jones. Yeah, in Jessica Jones. They were just like homages to it. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, in Power Man, he actually, that was the costume he wore right. leaving the prison. Yeah. Um, and I could see this being for Danny Rand as well, like another kind of Daredevil costume where it's like added protection in addition to, you know, well, we'll just see. hiding his identity for as as a super rich dude. Yeah, we'll see. Because uh, if you've seen Iron Fist, he's literally open chest because mm-hmm. he has to show that dragon tattoo that he has. He has a little like. Yeah, I could see him going with like hit, shirtless mm-hmm. pants and just the mask because he wants to hide his identity as rich dude. Because otherwise, you know, you just get a bunch of lawsuits from people you beat up. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? Of course. That, that's kind of yeah, the, the realistic true. draw of, like, why he would need it. Okay. Um, but that is your... That's yeah. your winner out of all those six. For oh, me, yeah. it's actually going to be Infinity Wars teaser. I mean, I know it sounds goofy because it's it's only kind of a teaser. But it's mm. it's just so cool for me to, to imagine all these different franchises finally coming together in this major universe, a, a most amazing crossover. Yeah. It's it's the it's it's the pinnacle for the Marvel universe at the point. Like all, all these other movies have all been building up to this one point, and it was really cool to see the concept of what they plan to do with Thanos. Because I, I yeah, it's he's, he's he's not super power built. I think they're going to do kind of a backstory in him as well, like how he came to power, how he got the Infinity Gauntlet in the first place, and what he's planning to do with the Infinity Gems. And that to me is, is kind of cool. Like I, I like the origin stories for villains as much as I do heroes. Oh yeah. Uh, my biggest thing on it, because of course it's being teaser, and I kind of joked about it, but hopefully they take it serious. They better have like crazy backup slash <laughs> life insurance for all yeah. these people, because heaven forbid one of your main guys, especially let's say Mister Downey Jr., mm-hmm. something happens to him, <laughs> gets decapitated, whatever. Um, you know, can't can't. Or they, for him, they did special effects as a young man, so they couldn't do the same thing as like regular Robert Downey Jr. if they needed to. That's true. That's true. It's, yeah, but I'm, sure they have, nowadays, yeah, I'm pretty anything. sure they have insurance policies on everybody, just like they had an insurance policy on Carrie Fisher. Yeah, anything, everything is literally possible, especially with these uh, cinematic effects. So, Absolutely. But yeah, the, the teaser, oh my God, it, it throws back to the first Marvel film, mm-hmm. Iron Man. Go talk at least shows a little screenshots of uh, like, every film. This has been way. a decade in the making, folks. And, and it's sad to think about it. It's been 10 years. And it can't complain, but 10 years of Marvel movies. And you gotta give it up to Disney. Give it up to Disney. Because yeah, they invested this... and they invested properly and they're doing it justice. They're doing it right. Yeah, absolutely. So good for them. Uh, they've more than made their money back on the Marvel purchase and the oh, Lucasfilm purchase. Yeah. You know, so this is definitely a combination. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I think it's, what is it, next year? It's an extra product. Uh, yeah, because like I said, they're, they're, it's, a, it's going to be a two-parter. Yeah, so they're so filming this year, and it should be out sometime 2018, I believe. Yeah. Um, so looking forward to it myself. But it, this is our first glimpse into that combination of all those different characters. It's mm-hmm. kind of fun to see them standing together, uh, just these t- people from different movie franchises that you ne- ne- never get to see real-life crossovers in a movie. Especially you know, you see it in comics, you see it sometimes on animated shows, but never in... But- Live the, action. A live action versions like it doesn't just doesn't happen. Like, there are too many people, other people who own these licenses generally. Yeah, because you know how people uh, freaked out, and I mean in a good way, they yeah. freaked out where they did like the first uh, Batman Green Hornet crossover uh, when it was Supergirl yeah. and the Flash. At least for this month. Yeah, because you don't you it. don't get to see them generally. Yeah, so you don't it's see kind of a like, cool thing. So, but, and and they're just going to be so many characters. I think they're up to like 36, 40, 40 actual like from different franchise characters all going up against like one overpowered dude and my, my thing in it is I mean, cool. I'm, hopefully nobody acts and I'm talking guys and girls no too much celebrity diva-ish and try to fight for camera time you know that hopefully they're hey, that's something like hey, for them. That's something hey for them I'm in this I'm in this kind of, kind that's, of deal yeah that's something for the, that director to kind of do with I mean yeah, that's for me I'm just going to sit there and watch it and enjoy and hopefully nobody pisses them off there. too because it's been proven and it's been done you can literally get boot and, re, and re, your, yeah, your sure. what do you call it role position whatever it could be Replaced. filled by anybody else there you yeah. go thank you but it, it could happen but it's going to be amazing that's why the teaser I wanted to pick the teaser but it, only because I saw more in Iron Fist no I picked the teaser though, so there you go everybody's satisfied but everything yeah, else is okay. really good I, I like the uh, the the um Samurai Jack trailer, very dark. Kind of interested to see where it goes. Uh, Stranger Things is kind of cool too. Kind of short, just to give you that same vibe of like 1980s, especially when they're 
through the Halloween in Ghostbuster oh, that, costume. That was awesome. That just I'm like, okay, out. that's yeah, that's that's totally period. Yeah. Uh, the Teen Titan Judas contract was interesting in that it was Teen Titans versus Slade, but with him kidnapping them for like the hive. I'm like, okay, yeah. that's that's an interesting song, but it very much is in the art style of the original Teen Titans Cartoon Network yeah. franchise. It's not like but anime definitely style, but it, it looked cool. Out. And then Courts Guard in the Galaxy was also a cool little teaser. We get to see a few more characters. Um, and that's always neat. But for me, the Infinity Wars teaser won out over them all. Just because it was new. And it's something some, everybody's looking forward to in 2018. Oh, yeah. And this is our first glimpse into that you know, film production world. So there you go. That's it for the show, folks. Um, remember, if you like the podcast, you want to help support us, you can find out all the ways to do so at geekbytespodcast.com slash support. There you go. Thanks, it. Thanks for watching, for listening, everybody. For Geek Binds Podcast, I am Ramon Mejia. This I'm guy is. And remember, hooks, till we see you again, go geek out about something. Mm-hmm.